Poco are known for their flagship killing devices, but now they're switching gears with the new Poco M3. It's a phone with an entry-level price, but it still brings some competitive mid-range features like awesome battery life and stereo speakers. Let's see what it's all about in our full review. The Poco M3 is an entry-level device, though you wouldn't guess it at first glance. Sure, the back is plastic, and Poco doesn't try to hide that, but it manages to look unique with the glass accent and Poco logo. Instead of pretending to be shiny glass, the back panel is matte, with a rough, almost leathery texture. This adds plenty of grip. The frame is made of plastic as well, and it's rather sharp and angular, which adds even more grip. The Poco M3 isn't light, almost 200 grams, partly because of its huge battery pack, but it feels great in the hand. On the front is a large 6.53 inch IPS LCD screen covered by Gorilla Glass 3, with a 1080p resolution and a droplet shaped notch at the top for the selfie cam. This display is pretty nice, 1080p is great to have at this price point and content on screen looks plenty sharp. Contrast is good, with deep enough blacks, and brightness is decent. We measured up to 440 nits maximum in auto mode when in bright conditions. Colors aren't too accurate out of the box, but we were able to achieve some great accuracy through the color settings. What surprised us about the Poco M3 is that it not only has a 3.5mm jack for headphones, but also a pair of dedicated stereo speakers, something you usually see on premium devices. They're mounted on the top and bottom of the frame and sound pretty well balanced. Overall, their performance is some of the best we've heard recently. The Poco M3 scored a good mark in our loudness test, and you get solid bass and superb midtones too. Another striking feature of the Poco M3 is its battery life, thanks to its huge 6,000 mAh power pack. You'd be hard pressed to find a phone with better battery endurance. The Poco M3 was able to score an incredible rating of 154 hours in our battery life tests. Charging speed, on the other hand, isn't too impressive. Even though the M3 supports up to 18 watt charging, with the bundled adapter, we were able to charge from zero to only 25% in half an hour. A full charge would take the better part of three hours. Waking up and unlocking the Poco M3 is done with a side mounted fingerprint reader. It's quite responsive, though it's not as fast as other readers we've seen lately, perhaps due to the unlock animation. As far as storage goes, you can opt for 64 or 128 gigs on board, and this is expandable through microSD. The Poco M3's interface is MIUI 12 over Android 10, which is the same as what you'll find running on recent Xiaomi devices too. While many functions are provided by Google's apps, there are some proprietary ones too, like the gallery, music, and security apps. In MIUI 12, you can opt to split the notification shade into two separate panels, the notification panel and the control panel, kind of like what you'd see on iOS. There is an app drawer enabled by default that stores all of your apps and organizes them into categories too if you like. Finally, even on our unit, we saw occasional ads within certain apps or when the virus scanner fires up after installing something from the Play Store and some markets may have it even worse than that. Under the hood of the Poco M3 is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 662 chipset, which is a recently released but low-end silicon. It does an okay job for this class, but performance is one area in which the budget nature of the Poco M3 shines through. Now onto the Poco M3's cameras. There's a triple camera setup on the back, but it's a basic setup. There's a 48 megapixel quad bear camera, a 2 megapixel macro cam, and a depth sensor. Photos from the main camera come out at 12 megapixels, and during the day, these are superb for this class. There's more than enough detail, balanced sharpness, good contrast, and lively colors. Dynamic range is average, and there is a bit of corner softness and visible noise. But overall, these photos are much better than we expected. The depth sensor is here to help out in portrait mode, and these come out pretty nice. There's good detail, proficient separation, and natural looking defocused backgrounds. Close-up shots taken with the macro cam are okay if there's enough light. You can get enough detail for 2 megapixels and low noise, but contrast isn't great. The trouble is, since focus is fixed, it usually takes multiple tries to get a macro shot to come out sharp. In low light, photos from the main camera are mediocre in quality. There's enough detail, 
but the pictures are dark and quite noisy, with washed out colors. For selfies, the Poco M3 has an 8 megapixel front facing camera. These photos have okay contrast and colors, and a mediocre amount of detail. There's visible noise and average dynamic range, and we ran into occasional issues with the exposure too. Videos can be recorded in up to only 1080p resolution at 30fps. This footage has okay contrast and colors, average detail, and narrow dynamic range. There's no support for electronic stabilization here. So that's the Poco M3. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe and see you on the next one.